uh, our next speaker for today is Ben Wei. He's a software engineer from Facebook, and he'll be talking about how to uh, manage and monitor NICs and OpenVMC. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, so I'm Ben. I've been working on uh, OpenVMC for the last uh, two and a half years, and I spent some time uh, working with Nick. So I think, uh, so here, I'll try to share some of the motivations why we are doing it, and what are we doing to monitor and manage the niche. And actually, one of my main purposes is I want to get some feedback from everyone to see is this useful for OpenBMC, and um, are there any feedback and ideas that we can collaborate on? Okay. Okay. So, so number one is uh, what's the what's the problem we're trying to solve? What's the motivation? So. What we notice is the, the niche being a single point of failure in our platform. So typically, all our remediation goes through network. So when the niche is down, essentially, usually, we have to send somebody out to the, to the data center, to the system, to power cycle. Uh, so this doesn't work so well when you have like millions of BMC deployed. So number one is really, can, um, can BMC auto-detect this issue and auto-remediate as much as possible? So that's number one. And also, the, uh, the secondly is the BMC availability. So at least in our fleet, we rely on a BMC to manage and monitor our fleet health. So let's say even if the host network is up, but if a BMC link is down, uh, essentially we are blind because we lose the telemetry, we lost the sensor data, and we don't have any of the OOP service. So um, we can work around this. So let's say perhaps if the host link is up, then maybe there's some way for the host to reset the BMC. So that's possible you have, if you have some uh, GPIO connected. But that's not ideal because, um, one, uh, we lose the it's ungraceful BMC shutdown. right? So that's not good. And two, uh, whatever BMC is working on in, a, in a, whatever logs the BMC has in the RAM drive, when you force the BMC reboot, you lose all, the, all of that. And another issue we see a lot is, uh, is so in our fleet, let's say you have um, a million, two million BMCs, okay? And then you have maybe a hundred, couple hundred BMCs being unreachable. So if we always send someone out to power cycle it, so number one, it's not feasible, it's expensive. And two, how would you know if this is a BMC issue or if, it's, if there's a niche firmware bug? And so for a long time, we thought, okay, we are breaching BMCs because out of these two million BMCs, we have like a few hundred unavailable. It needs to be recovered through power cycle. And we're trying to find some BMC bot, but is that really a BMC issue or is just lint, uh, NIT being down, right? So there's no way for us to tell. And then we won't be able to reproduce this in our lab either, just um, 200 out of 2 million, that's a very small percentage. So not reproducible. So in this case, if BMC is functional, can BMC log the event and do self-recovery? Uh, first of all, detect lint is down and then uh, do self-recovery so that later when we want to debug, we have some data point to go on. So that's our second motivation, right? And lastly, is, so let's say um, now our BMC is reliable. The BMC is always on a network. Even if the network's down, BMC has a way to recover. Uh, so the next step is, can we do even better? Can we proactively monitor the niche link status on the host? So it's not just the BMC now. So now BMC is reliable. Can we detect host issues? And also, can we detach the NIT issues uh, before NIT crashes. So let's say if we, we have a problematic symptom we can detach, can we trigger this remediation or can we raise the alarm or can we collect all this data and monitor it on a dashboard? So this will help our service robustness. So that's, our, so that's another improvement from BMC Lynch. So these are what our, our main motivations are, right? And then what are we doing in OpenBMC to, to achieve all this? Uh, okay, so from BMC side, we connect to NIT through this NCSI, this NCSI interface. So um, the platform that I'm familiar with is this is basically NCSI over Ethernet. So this is a sideband interface to a controller uh, where BMC can send, um, can configure NIT and can monitor and um, send uh, management commands to a NIT. So you can also run NCSI on MCTP, that's another option. And I think on OCP NIT, Typically, you have two paths to a BMC. One is NCSI, one is MCTP. But here, I'll just focus on uh, NCSI over the uh, over MII, over RBT. So, on the, so a quick intro on the NCSI. So 
the so there is the data plane traffic. So that's just pass through. That's like your normal Ethernet traffic. That's not very interesting to the BMC. But the control plane traffic, there are three types. So there are commands, response, and this uh, asynchronous event notification, or the AENs. So notice on the NCSI, uh, the commands are always initiated from BMC. So there's no way for the NIT to send any command to BMC. So it's always BMC initiates, uh, initiates the traffic, sends command, and NIT respond. So if NIT wants to initiate any, uh, sends any interrupt BMC or notification, it's done through AEN. So AEN are this asynchronous packet. It's essentially like interrupts. So it's an event to BMC, letting BMC know some uh, link status change or some other NIT events. Uh, and then for the AENs, uh, one thing about them is there is no acknowledgment. So it's uh, fire and forget. So when NIT sends AEN, it doesn't know if BMC received it or not. So there's no add packet back to the NIT. OK, so what does uh, NCSI packet look like? So this is uh, NCSI over Ethernet. So you have a normal Ethernet frame. Uh, there's a special Ether type to specify this is NCSI control traffic. So then the uh, NCSI packet is encapsulated in an Ethernet frame. And then um, you have some technical details. So on the NCSI packet, you have 16 byte header and you have the four byte checksum. Um, minimum size is 46. So if your payload is very small, which is actually true today for all the NCSI standard commands, the normal standard NCSI commands has payload either zero or eight, but no more than um, no more than 26. So typically the payloads are small for standard commands. And checksum needs to be four byte aligned. And then, um, but what you can do also, the, the NCSI standard also provides a way to tunnel traffic through NCSI. So we can actually, for example, we can carry PODM traffic through NCSI. So that's very useful for BMC. And you can probably carry some other traffic through NCSI if you define OEM commands. But on a standard, it's basically NCSI control packets or PODM over NCSI. And if you carry PODM traffic, then the payload can be large. So then you're going to reach this um, 1,500 byte uh, maximum packet size. OK, so then I think earlier, I think Deepak touched briefly on the, on the PODM, right? So here's a comprehensive presentation on PODM. So here I'll touch briefly again on what PODM can do for OpenBMC and what we can do to manage NIT. So I think two things that's uh, important for NIT management. So one, PODM actually allows a way for BMC to discover additional sensors if the NIT firmware supports it. So let's say if NIT firmware supports um, PODM over NCSI, then uh, it's kind of like the IPMI SDR. So um, BMC can actually query what sensor is available and get all the sensors. So not just the numeric sensors. So numeric sensors would be like temperature sensors, uh, link speed. But there are also state sensors, like NIT health status. So this is all available through PODM. And another important thing is uh, PODM provides a standard way to do a firmware update. So I think um, if we want to do out-of-band firmware update for NIT, so we can do in-band, no problem, through a PCI, PCIe link, no problem. But if you want to do out-of-band firmware update, then the PODM provides a standard way for us to do it. Right? So we can think of, um, so for PODM, I mean, for PODM over NCSI, we can think of the, uh, the physical layer would be RMII, the, the, connect, the physical connection. Then on top, you have RBT, uh, Ethernet, basically. So you have Ethernet running. And then on top, you would have uh, NCSI running on Ethernet. The pass-through traffic, we don't care so much about. But then there's the control packets. And then on top, you have PODM base, which specified PODM over NCSI binding. So it tells you how we can encapsulate PODM traffic within NCSI. And then once you have that implemented, then on top, you have different PODM types. So then there's the monitoring control, which allows us to get the sensor information. Uh, there's a PODM for flu. You can read the serial and EEPROM on the NIT, or you can do the firmware update. So this is sort of like the, the stat for the man management stat for the NIT. OK. OK, so NCSI control packets. So earlier, I mentioned what, the, what NCSI traffic looked like. So right now, this is the list of all the NCSI commands we have in the 1.1 standard. So I tried to group them into several types. So 
we have the standard configuration one. So these are like what we used to initialize the, the network part on boot up. So enable channel, um, enable select package, uh, enable broadcast filter. So those are probably you only do it once on boot up. And you don't have to, unless you want to reconfigure, you probably don't have to do them again. But then there are some other comments that's useful for monitoring. So dead version ID tells us the firmware that's running on the NCSI. Uh, capabilities and parameters are important because it tells you what's the current configuration. So capabilities tell you what the NIT is capable of, what feature it supports. The parameters tells you how it's currently configured, and you can change this. And then also there are some comments that allow you to um, carry PLDM over NCSI. And OK, so one thing about the PLDM over NCSI. Uh, so earlier I mentioned the NCSI comments are always initiated from BMC to device. Uh, for PODM, it's actually two ways. So PODM, both device or BMC, can initiate comment. So when you run PODM on, on MCTP, this is no problem, because MCTP allows two-way communication. For NCSI, uh, to make this work, we actually have a couple comments added to the NCSI to allow BMC to pull pending comments. So it's not ideal, but so essentially to allow NIT to send comment to BMC, BMC has to initiate polling. So it, it queries the pending POD and comments, gets the comment, handles it, and then sends a response back via NCSI. So that's how we can run PODM traffic on NCSI. And then since the, um, so besides the standard comments, there's also usually different NIT vendors have their own set of extensions, the OEM comments. So these OEM comments actually give you additional capabilities in monitoring. So here I don't list, I mean, every vendor has their own implementation, but typically they would have some sort of a discovery comments to say, uh, to allow you to find out what features they support, what additional OEM comments they support. And they may have additional OEM AENs, and then you may be able to do NIT reset, which is not possible in the standard comments. You cannot reset the NIT. Uh, and then you have some OEM specific comment to, for management and monitoring. And these are the standard AENs. So the AENs, there's a, the PODM AEN is new that allows BMC to find out if there's uh, pending PODM comments. And OEM can define their own AEN. So for example, OEM may give you a thermal event AEN. So rather than BMC pull the temperature sensor, you may be able to set some threshold via OEM command, and you get notification if the NIT is approaching this threshold. So that's very useful in our monitoring. Um, OK, so what do we have today in OpenBMC as far as uh, NIT management? Um, so first, kernel. So on the kernel side, OK, by default, kernel fighter x, we always initialize the NCSI device on boot. So that's, that's been upstream in the kernel. And additionally, I think we have, I have upstreamed a few patches to, to get the system MAC address. So I think that one, we, for, with that, we need to use OEM commands. So for certain NIT, if we recognize the NIT vendors, we have a special OEM commands to retrieve the, um, the MAC address and configure BMC accordingly. And we enable all standard AENs in current kernel. And, but more importantly, I think kernel also provides the uh, netlint capability. So you can actually send and receive uh, NCSI comments through user space by using netlint. So send any netlint, netlint traffic to kernel, kernel will send this out and um, send response back. So this enables all the NIT management and monitoring from user space. And you can, and uh, one more thing is this um, broadcast AEN over user space. So this one, um, yeah, we need to, I think there's some patch that's not upstream yet, which broadcasts the AEN to user space, but it's not in the current kernel today. So currently, I think if kernel driver received AEN, it's just going to load it internally, but it doesn't broadcast to user space. But we have a patch we need to upstream to enable this. So that's ongoing. But let's say you have this capability in kernel, and on the user space, then uh, on, on the Facebook Tilda Pass platform, what we have is one, it's a lib NCSI. So this is a common library that basically encode and de encode NCSI comments and decode response. Basically, it's the, the NCSI handler. So it handles all the standard NCSI comments and also the OEM ones. So on the ones that we recognize, it will decode OEM AEN and uh, support OEM comments. And then we have this uh, libpldm over NCSI. 
And this is the uh, shared library that provides uh, PODM over NCSI binding. So essentially, this is a PODM handler. So it handles the standard PODM commands, but it um, it details the PODM payload from NCSI. And then uh, when it wants to send response back, it takes a PODM command, encapsulates it in NCSI packet, and send to kernel via netlint to, to be sent out. So those two are the common libraries we have on OpenBMC. And then we have this NCSID. So NCSID is our main monitor daemon. So essentially, it's uh, it runs on our platform. And then it does the, so few things it does. One, it, it does additional net configuration. So kernel does the initial configuration. But then in NCSID, we will detect uh, what net vendor this is and what OEM commands it support and what OEM AEN it supports. And it tries to ena enable the features that we need. And also, it monitors lint status. It mon monitors the lint temperature, and it listen to, listens to any uh, kernel AEM messages. And on any major lint events, it will log, and it will either trigger remediation locally within BMC, or it will try to send an alert out. So in this case, BMC is, is working with outside service together to remediate this issue. So we may not want to do all the remediation locally on BMC side. Um, for flexibility reasons, right? So let's say um, if we have overly aggressive remediation open BMC, then to fix it, we may need to deploy new BMC. So what we can do is just have BMC detect this event and then send this data outside. So may we, we have a service running outside of BMC can collect this data and decide what's the best way to remediate. Oh, and additionally, NCSID will detect the PODM support. So you will find if it uh, sees the NIT supports PODM over NCSI, then you will try to do a sensor discovery. So you will send additional PM, PODM commands to the NIT, find out how many sensor it supports, what's the threshold, and you will start monitoring them. So that's the NCSID. And also on user space, we have this uh, command line utility, NCSI util. So this is kind of like, uh, so it's kind of like the IPMI tool that we have. So it allows users to send a raw NCSI data to NIT. So this is very useful for um, initial debugging and bring up on um, both NIT and BMC. So what we have been using this for is, let's say, if we are working with new NIT vendors, um, OK, so maybe their NIT firmware stack doesn't completely work yet, and we want to try a few NCSI commands. Um, yeah, so this is a way to trigger all, all this, right? Or we want to, in our test environment, let's say we want to trigger certain net, uh, NIT conditions. We want to trigger certain NIT AEN. So let's say if a NIT AEN only triggers on um, NIT reset, for example. OK, so normally you may not be able to, or on certain traffic patterns. So you may not be able to trigger this AEN manually. So now what you can do is define an OEM command, what was the NIT firmware team, define their uh, OEM command, and for BMC, send a certain command to trigger this AEN, and you can, you can test your uh, remediation process. So this is uh, useful for debug features. And so this, so here are some examples. So this is some internal example how, how we use NCSI util. So for example, uh, we can get some statistics. We can get even more statistics. And um, yeah, some more statistics. Or we can get the NIT parameter. So, so for example, you can check how NIT is configured currently. What's the current MAC address it's been stored? what AENs are in enabled, and other conf NIT configuration. And oh, and then you can use this for PODM debug. Because now, uh, if the NIT supports PODM over NCSI, you can manually send, so you can manually construct your payload PODM command. And you can send over the NCSI, and you get response back. So in this example, I was trying to read. So the first command, I was trying to read some temperature sensor, and then once I get the sensor back, I send another command to get the threshold, just to see what's the, what, what this uh, sensor threshold is. So it's for debug purpose. OK, so on the NCSID, so, um, so this is our monitoring daemon. So on BMC launch, NCSD is always running. And even if NCSD crashes, it restarts, right? So it's always available. And it's always available. It monitors the at very least it monitors the NIT status. So OK, so, so it does the additional NIT configuration. So kernel already does it. So on boot up, kernel will detect NIT and then configure the NCSI. 
But our NCS, NCS ID does initial configuration. So one, it checks the vendor ID and checks the uh, OEM capabilities. So in addition to the standard commands, we check, is this an OEM? Is this a vendor we recognize? If it does, what OEM commands does it support? What OEM AEN does it support? Can we enable them? And it does it based on our internal BMC configuration. So let's say if um, somebody load a new test firmware from a new OEM, you know, we don't enable all their notification, notifications just because they support it. And then we also detect PODM over NCSI. And if niche supports it, we will report it. And then we start doing sensor discovery. So essentially, this is um, there are PODM commands you can do to discover what additional sensors there are on this niche. And we get a threshold too. So we can start monitoring them. Um, right. OK, so what are we monitoring? So number one is, so OK, so NCS, NCSID works in a polling mode. So some of the things it monitors are the network status. So this is very important for our BMC. So if BMC link is down, detect this and try to reinitialize the NCSI interface to see if we can bring the link back up. So earlier, without NCSID, so this is actually one of our main motivation to add NCSID. Because prior to this, we do see a lot of times where BMC just lose network connection. Uh, why this happens? So the possible scenario. So let's say if uh, someone logged into the host and performs an in-band NIT reset, um, OK, so now NIT firmware resets, the NCSI channel becomes in, needs to be reconfigured. OK, so now BMC loses network connection. We cannot reconfigure NCSI. That's one. Or if someone, if we have an in-band firmware update, so when we do a NIT firmware update, once we activate new firmware, then the uh, NCSI channel needs to be reconfigured again. So prior to we have NCSID running, we see this a lot. Like every time we do NIT firmware update, we lose BMC. And that involves um, power cycle of the entire sled. I mean, it's just not a graceful solution. Or uh, if the NIT firmware crashed. So OK, NIT firmware crashed, everything re init Great, the watchdog recovers NIT firmware. But again, NCSI need to be reconfigured. So this one will, will bring the so this one will detect it and bring the BMC link back up. Secondly, we check BMC MAC address. So for our use case, uh, we obtain, so actually this is done in kernel. So on kernel boot up, kernel will um, send OEM command to get the MAC address from niche and initialize BMC and system based on the, the MAC address received. However, we have seen cases where either due to a firmware bug or due to NIT boot time. When doing BMC boot, we get O0 back from uh, NIT. Uh, and since there's no retry, so once, and then this is only done during boot. So once you finish booting a kernel, you're stuck with this O0 match. And we cannot log back into BMC to reconfigure. But basically, your BMC has no network access at all, uh, even though now the NIT firmware is back up and BMC is running. But we have no way to get back to BMC and retry this step. So this is also something NCS, NC, NCSID is checking. So, um, and we see this early on in our, in our platform bring up, but I'm not sure if this is still happening today. And okay, so check need firmware version. So this is obvious. So let's say if someone is doing an um, uh, in-band need firmware update. So then, okay, firmware changed. So BMC can get this information, load it, push out to some dashboard. So we have, so we have some info. And by the way, all this um, polling mode, they are not, it can be individually configurable. So for, exa for example, the link status, you probably want to check every few seconds or every minute. Um, the MAC address, you probably don't, don't care too much. You don't check every day or every couple hours. Firmware version, same thing, maybe check every hour, right? You don't have to flood the, flood the NCSI channel. So, okay, and we need temperature. This probably happens more frequently. And then also be PODM sensors. So the PODM sensors, if they're available, our NCSID will pull it. And uh, so the, here I list some of the examples of PODM sensors. So it's not just the temperature sensors. So temperature sensors are like um, system temperature. And actually, so what happens on OCP niche, um, even without PODM, we can get temperature sensors, right? So OCP niche always has a sensor available on, on I2C. However, if there are additional temperature sensors the niche supports, then 
uh, they are not access, they may not be accessible through I squared C. And technically, you may not need PODM to get them because the NIT firmware that can always define additional OEM commands. So you, you can have additional OEM commands to read ambient temperature sensors or port the optic sensor. However, the this is not standard, and this will vary from NIT vendor to vendor. So the PODM provides a standard way for BMC to, to discover, hey, uh, what sensors are available on board, and give us just the threshold, and even configure the threshold. So in he, so here, NCSID will discover this, and it will get the, all the temperature available sensors. Additionally, there are state sensors. So the state sensors are like the health state. So these are sort of like, um, it depends on firmware implementation, but let's say you may have a self-check, then you may be able to report health, uh, net health based on how net firmware reports it. So anyway, BMC will collect this information and this will, it will push this stuff out to a dashboard so that it enables the free wide monitoring. So we can say, hey, um, once we load firmware version 5.2 on vendor A, we see a spike of um, health state change or we see a spike of a uh, temperature sensor uh, across the threshold. So it enables this, this kind of um, analysis, right? So in this case, BMC doesn't perform any remediation, but it's more monitoring. We just collect this data and we send this out to our dashboard. Okay, so additionally, we monitor the standard AENs. So these are not polling, right? So these are where NCSID listens to kernel messages and log any AEN when you receive them. So this requires kernel patch to broadcast all the AEN kernel receive. But so for, for example, the standard AENs are these three. So right now, these are the only AENs supported by one, uh, NCSI spec 1.1. Then status change. So this is pretty straightforward. If someone unplugged the table, you get this notification. Configuration required. So this happens when NIT reboot or basically NCSI lint is down. So before NCSI, NCSI lint goes down, uh, NIT firmware will send this um, message to BMC to say, hey, please reconfigure because I'm about to get rebooted. So BMC will log this information. And also there's a driver status change. So from what I see, this typically happens when the host gets rebooted. Uh, so about the standard AENs, one thing I do notice is it's not well defined in a shared NIT environment. So here is one example of a Facebook platform where we have four hosts in a BMC connect to a, a multi-host NIT. So in this case, it's a shared NIT of four hosts and one BMC. So in this case, um, it's not clear what driver status change, which host driver status change is linked to. And I see this uh, being implementation dependent. On some vendors, I see it's always mapped to slot one. So when slot two, three, and four power cycles, I don't get this uh, notification. On some vendors, I see um, every single slot when they power cycle, I get this implementation. But in the AEN itself, unfortunately, SPED does not define, there's no bit field for you to tell, okay, which um, host this maps to. So hopefully this will get fit, get fixed in a, in a future version. And we have uh, OEM AEN. So on the OEM AEN, so these are not part of standard, but usually each OEM will define their own additional alert for BMC to monitor. So here are some examples. So here are some of the stuff that we encountered in, uh, in our production, and then which I can share. So one is price shutdown. So most of this happens on the, on the uh, shared niche. So on the single host niche, it's pretty standard. So you have one host map to one niche, no problem. But on some shared host niche, let's say if uh, one of the slots surprise, um, has a kernel pan niche or it gets surprise shutdown, niche firmware will go into bad state. So it doesn't crash right away, but what we see is after enough surprise shutdowns, you lose connectivity. The entire niche firmware crashes, you lose connect connectivity. So in this case, it's better we detect this early. So let's say if we didn't detect surprise shutdown early, then BMC can collect this information and again, push out to, to outside service so that we are aware, oh, by the way, this sled has already re uh, received three uh, surprise shutdown events over the last couple of days. Should we start, should we do a, should we remove this from production, drain the traffic reboot right now? Uh, I mean, just some, some data points for us. Or we may say that, um, yeah, after firmware upgrade, uh, now we see a spike in, in surprise shutdown correlated to firmware 
5.6. So this is one use case. Uh, another one is niche fatal error. So in this case, what happened is um, all the hosts will, uh, have lost connectivity because niche firmware crashed. So due to excessive surprise shutdown, for example, or due to some other issues, doesn't matter. But none of the host has uh, any uplinge. BMC is available. BMC sideband is still available. So in this case, uh, what we asked uh, the NIT firmware to do is send us heartbeat AEN. So the heartbeat, because the, uh, so earlier I mentioned that the AEN doesn't have any edge. So there's actually no guarantee BMC will receive AEN. So for this kind of fatal error, where we want to perform remediation, if the host just sends one AEN and it gets lost, uh, now then, then we are stuck again. So eventually, so BMC will miss this, and then there will be no remediation, and we have to send somebody out there to power cycle. So in this case, what we want to do is, since NIT is in a fatal error state, just send heartbeat AEN to, to BMC. Every, every three seconds, every five seconds, doesn't matter. When BMC receive it, it, it will, first of all, it will send the OEM command to the NIT to say, okay, got it, st stop the AEN. And then it will trigger outside service to say, okay, this niche needs to be power cycled. And either we come, either we drain the host, stop all traffic, and then so the point is this can be automated. So we can detect this, we can automate this uh, remediation without having uh, manual intervention. Right? And then we can also log the event so that we know how frequently these are happening. Or if this happens in certain region, like are we seeing this? Load isolated in Dallas region or in other data centers. Right? So, um, so other OEM ANs including such a thermal event. So we can configure what's the threshold. So if, and we can configure which sensor we want to monitor. So certain, if we see the threshold, does BMC want to crank up the fan or do we shut down the shut down the system, or we just load the event and let the outside service decide what's the best way to remediate. That's one way. And then one more is the NIT reboot. So in this case, actually, it's still fatal error, but it's recoverable. So NIT has encountered fatal error, but it has self-recovered. So in this case, um, either through watchdog timer or what, whatever it means, NIT recovered from fatal error, and it rebooted. However, we still want to lock this event because this allows us to correlate to NIT firmware or to our traffic pattern. So let's say if we run some certain traffic with certain NIT firmware combination that hit a NIT corner case. Without this kind of monitoring, we have no idea we are causing NIT to, we hit a fatal error because NIT will recover and everything is fine until one day when NIT cannot recover and then you, you have 50% of host losing connectivity. So this gives us a way to monitor this kind of events and we can log and decide what remediation we want to do, if any. Right, so at least we didn't collect data when, when this kind of event happens. Okay, so those are some of the high level uh, what we're doing um, for NIT monitoring management. So for collaboration, on the kernel patches, so I think last couple of weeks I've sent, so kernel already has the um, uh, NCSI NetLint support, but last few weeks I've I have submitted a few patches to enable user space to send any payload to NCSI, to, to kernel NCSI driver. So, and also I have a new, I, I upstream a new patch to support PODM over NCSI traffic. So from user space, we will be able to send any of the, uh, the PODM traffic to kernel and then get response back. So those patches has been upstreamed. And on user space, uh, so internally we have this tool called NCSI util. So essentially, this is a user space version. So this is so on a kernel, we have a netlint who takes NCSI who takes the uh, netlint payload. So the NCSI util is the user space part that enables we us to send NCSI command over netlint. So this one I have sent a patch to the uh, this GitHub repo. I think this is the one for OpenBMC, and I sent a patch and a pull request. So it should be merged shortly. I hope. And then, uh, but also, um, I will send additional pull request on enable response parsing and um, interpret response. But more importantly, earlier I talked to, I think, Deepak and Tom for this uh, PMCI tool and PODM tool. So I think one of my goals will be to integrate what we have in NCSI util into this existing PODM tool or PMCI tool. I think this will be useful to all the OpenBMC platforms because it doesn't really need any kernel support. So kernel already has all the support there. 
uh, Netlin for NCSI. So we just need to make sure our, we just need to add this to our user space program. So for the NCSID, um, yeah, I'll post more details in the OpenBMC mailing list, mainly to get some feedback to see the, to summarize what I just described here. I mean, are, are these features useful? Um, are there other use cases people are interested? And can we collaborate and port this to OpenBMC for other platforms? And yep, so the libpldm, we already have a libpldm. Uh, I think, so I plan to send additional patches to, to enable PODM over NCSI. Just, you can run, I think currently PODM is linked to uh, libmctp, but we can also do PODM over NCI. So this is ongoing. Uh, yeah, so there's actually a lot more work to be done. So for example, uh, there's NCSI over MCTP, which I did not touch at all. I mean, this is also a viable management option. And in fact, sometimes it may be preferable to have two channels to niche. So you have normal internet traffic to over RBT, and then you do your management over MCTP. So that one I haven't touched at all, but I think if someone has feedback on this, I'd love to collaborate on. And another thing I'm thinking of is the configurable remediation. So right now, NCSID, we have some configuration available. However, I see for every error case, we should be able to list, like, do we want to reboot? Do we want to trigger external remediation? What's the, the steps? The remediation step should be configurable, and we should be able to prioritize. You know, try step one. If it doesn't recover, try step two. So I think that's something, something we can add. And lastly is this uh, command line utilities. I think if we can consolidate the command line utilities into PODM tool, it would be great. PMCI tool would be great. I mean, and then in a tool, we can enable uh, NCSI over RBT binding or PODM over NCSI or PODM over MCTP. I mean, TBD. So I think, yeah, for the discussion, we can discuss more on the over the mail list. But uh, you can always reach me at benway at fb.com. I'd love to hear your feedback and I'd love to hear if you have any more idea, if you have any ideas on how we can improve the BMC robustness, especially on the NIT management. I mean, anything that can keep our service going, uh, I'm all for it. Um, yep, that's it. So any questions? Yeah, oh, yeah, please. I'm curious why you used uh, uh, a negative case for the heartbeat instead of like a watchdog style where you would you you could get a, a regular actual heartbeat or the, the word heartbeat just set off in my mind for like oh well you would get these regularly but then you said fatal and so it's more like a heart attack than a heart <laughs> yeah so, so i was i was curious why like the the health you you could get regular messages from the nick instead of just emergency ones, and then you could say, oh, yeah, it's still alive, it's still alive, it's still alive. Oh, what's wrong with it? Yeah. Maybe you could poke it or something. Yeah, that's a good point. So I think, um, yeah, so I think the regular health works great. I think one of the main reasons is right now in the standard spec, there's no regular health AEN. So these are like the OEM AENs where the vendors implement in addition to the standard AEN. So in that case, they only implemented in the, um, in the fatal error case. So like in a good case, we don't, we don't flood the channel at all. We have no communication and relies on BMC polling. And only in error, and normally I think it's not really a heartbeat either. Like the error one, the reason we do heartbeat is mainly make sure BMC doesn't miss it. Because otherwise, if they just send one AEN or even five AENs to say, okay, fatal error occurred. If BMC is busy at a time or if we drop the packet for whatever reason, then we miss this forever because there's no act on the AEN, right? There's no way to resend AEN. So here we, by doing sort of a heartbeat or repeated AEN, we force the uh, device to always send the traffic until BMC acknowledges by turning it off. But I think uh, uh, if we reverse it, it works, it works great too. I mean, I think if we can add that to the NCS bed 1.2, it'll be great. If we can have a configurable heartbeat AEN, for example, like, BMC can configure how frequently I want to receive this. I think that'll be totally awesome. Yeah, I mean, I hope that is answered. It's not exactly the answer, but yeah. Yeah. So um, we were looking at your documentation on GitHub. And yeah. You mentioned about uh, the P uh, lib PLDM yes. requires kernel four. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, you were looking at our GitHub talk. Yes. Uh, we, we're using kernel five, so we're looking into. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Someone's reaching out. Great, you're looking at GitHub. So, 
uh, the only reason I said lib PLDM required kernel four is because when I started this, uh, I was based this on kernel four. So I implemented a custom netlint user uh, message for kernel communication. But recently, I ported all this to kernel five with the lib and L with the generic netlint. So the lib PLDM, um, it will be, I, I, will up, I will upstream this very shortly. So within the next week or so, it will be compatible with, uh, in fact, all the example I showed today is running on kernel five. So it doesn't require any of the special kernel patch or the um, the the users the, the netlint user message type. Okay. So I'll I'll have that shortly. Yeah. Yeah. So the issues you are talking about, uh, which are not part of the standard specification, uh, could you? Kind of uh, raise this in the DMDF forum so that yeah. to make it make the specification. But yeah, that's a good I'm pretty point. sure they're fixing it. Uh, but in, your input would be valuable. Uh, yeah, thanks for bringing this up. Because actually, this is one. This has been one of our, of our pain point. Because every niche vendor we work with, we sort of ask them, "Hey guys, can you implement these features as the OEM extension to give us the monitor capability?" Because this is not part of standard. But yeah, I, I will talk to. Uh, I'll try to get this. Ideally, we want to have all this as a part of NCSI standard going forward, maybe in 1.2, 1.3, so, so that we don't have this different implementation per OEM that give us the same features. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, I'll, I'll totally do it. So yeah. is there any other alternative to the PLDM, or like there's only one PLDM? Uh, so you mean for the sensor read? You mean? Yeah. Any uh, whatever the data you read uh, from uh, the PLDM, yeah. do you have any other specification like uh, we have IPMI or yes. PLDM? Yeah. So like that. Yeah. Good point. So mm, so unfortunately, right now there's no so PLDM provides for sensor read and firmware update. PLDM provides a standard way of doing it, but you can always do it in uh, via OEM comments, and I've seen that too on some net vendors, uh, on addition, like say optics optical sensors or uh, ambient sensor. They provide a special OEM commands for you to retrieve them. So that totally works. So the problem then is also like different vendors has their own implementation. And there's no standard way to discover them. So let's say one device has 10 sensors, the other one has five. What's the standard way for BMC to discover these sensors and also discover their ah. threshold and what sensor means what? So the PODM provides sort of a standard way to do it. but. Uh, there's probably alternatives. So you can have like you can have those by, via that OEM capabilities, get capabilities, and yeah. it can provide each OEM can provide their own capabilities so by the, the command. Yeah. So the problem though is even OEM depth capabilities are not standard. So one OEM has their own depth capability command. The other OEM has their own. So right now for OpenBMC, it's tricky. Just we this we detail the mm -hmm. OEM type and then we send different command to discover their capabilities. Uh, so, like, yeah, if we can get this standardized, then yeah, I think this problem will be solved. Yes. Yeah, because rather than uh, standardizing or adding to the NCSI spec, mm. you are posing an, another spec at the top of the NCSI. Every vendor has to implement now the PLDM model, well, or, or like a so. If if need, things needs to be corrected or added, can be added into the NCSI spec, spec versus adding another layer uh, to this. I think because the PLDM is actually, it does more than just sensors. I think for right now, I'm only using a very small part of a PLDM type two, which is why there's some overlap to sensors. But really, I think if we implement the full PLDM uh, stack, there's a lot more other features that support, which I think NCSI doesn't provide, like the yeah, event notification, for example. Yeah, we can talk more. Yeah. Uh, you showed before yeah. the uh, NCSI tool uh -huh. that you can send NCSI package packages over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You mean like uh, something like this, yeah. right? Yeah. So is it uh, only available in raw format? Uh, is there a way uh, to yeah. so have some parser? Is... You know, so you don't need to go and look exactly which okay, parts yeah. to send. This is uh, we can improve on it. So so originally this was uh, my hack to bring up new niche and uh, test BMC feature. So as a quick hack, I just do okay. the raw format. But yeah, I think we can totally add. So we add the the payload, the response decoding. 
but we can add the command too. We can add like send. We can name the command so you don't have to manually type in like the the instance ID or this kind of thing. Yeah, we can totally improve on this. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you very much.